cutting because signing the deeds over, signing the deed over is okay. But we really want to show up for the ribbon cutting ceremony. That'll be a lot more fun. And oh, by the way, we do training here at the hospital for our staff and different things. So any training that our staff is going through that could be a benefit to what you guys are doing, we ought to just work together and you can just come and be part of our training. We're, we're in a whole new season of things happening. And what we're able to do, of Anita Tyndall, myself, and a couple others, will be up to Legislative Hall meeting with uh, some legislators about the possibility of a for-profit rehab center coming in Delaware. We're going to be talking about that, and we're also going to be talking about some of the other uh, gaps right now that are existing in addiction treatment where there's there's like holes that people fall through and we're trying to we're going to come up with some strategies to close those holes and so we'll be talking with the legislators about that so but Thursday anybody's welcome we would, we would welcome you guys to be here any of you to, to participate in that something else on the whole gap transportation that you know I'm currently working on kind of getting in into the flow of things with the various providers and of course as I said first service I anytime I use the term I did this what I'm really saying is we did this because if I do it you do it and if I volunteer I volunteered you <laughs> and we're all in this thing together and uh, but one of the things with the with the gap um, uh, transportation we're just working with Code Purple this year, starting in December. What we're doing is currently, uh, if somebody calls somebody and says, you know, I need transportation to a Code Purple shelter, it's real hit or miss whether that's doable or not, when you can get there, who can do it, those type of things. So what I'm working with them on is coming up with a system and a process where those gaps get filled where right now we're looking at dividing the county into quarters or quadrants that where the shelters are clustered so that anybody that calls in and needs a ride will not wait longer than 30 minutes to be picked up and taken to a shelter. One of the things that came out of the, some discussion this week, which is really interesting, it just so happens that the person who is the head of the state motor pool, so any vehicle that's owned by the state of Delaware, this lady is in charge of all of that. They stable horses at our farm. So I said, oh, can we talk? Like, this is what we need. I think I'm going to need, you know, I'm trying to explain to her some stuff. And she's, and her husband is like, well, you ought to just do this. And you ought to just do that. Because he, he likes to, like, just get it done. And, and it, was, it was interesting because she's like, well, let him talk speaking of me, let him talk for himself. I'm, I'm still asking questions. I'm trying to find out what he wants. And the husband was like, well, do you, I mean, you do this and you do that. You ought to be able to do this and you ought to be able to do that. And she's like, just, will you just let us talk? And so she asked me some more questions. The long and the short of it was she finally said, well, how many vehicles do you need? <laughs> probably five. You need one for each quadrant and a spare. So probably five vehicles, five minivans. Okay. Well, actually, in September, we're going to have a bunch of minivans that leave State Motor Pool, and it'll be available. They usually go to auction, but nonprofits, they, they go from being active to surplus, surplus to auction. When they're in the surplus state, nonprofits have access to them. So one of the things she's going to do is she's working on now, how can we get five minivans? And how can we get them in September? And what's it going to cost to get five minivans? And then she's like, oh, and by the way, you know, I have all the repair records on all the vehicles, so I can tell you which ones are the best. I said, well, we want five that are the cream of the crop. <laughs> so it's like it's just another one of those things that pieces start falling into place. And uh, by September, we're going to have five minivans. We're still trying to work out the whole insurance thing. What does that look like? putting together volunteer pool, putting together other things. Just, there's a lot still needs to be done. We need people that can that want to be, that are interested in doing some of that. None, I'm not asking anybody to do it all. We're putting together a team that one can build this model. The goal 
is once we get the model and we do it through code purple from uh, December to March of next year, we're going to use that to, to work out the bugs. So by this time next year, we will have had a full year of that in and we'll be able to say in Sussex County, in the 1617 time frame, everybody that needed to get to a shelter got to a shelter. It took the longest it took to get somebody to a shelter was this. These are how many people will have the stats. And I was approached by somebody from Newcastle County, another uh, who has the apostolic center up there, and we've now began a dialogue about what would it look like if three centers come together statewide, us being Sussex, we're to life be in Newcastle, and, and we'll, we're meeting with somebody for Ken. What would it look like if we actually solved the code purple transportation issue statewide? So we got it wired. And then from there, then we're able to broaden that out and go, there's a ton of other agencies that transportation is a huge issue. There is some transportation, but there's gaps. So what would it look like if we're able to be the transportation gap ministry that wherever there's a gap in, in transportation for people that have needs, we got your car, we can do it. And then there's a whole ton of other stuff that my brain runs off with, but I, I'll leave that for another day. Uh, but anyway, th good things, good things are happening. Good things are happening. Um, this is Pentecost Sunday. Wow, Hallelujah. four people showed up. <laughs> uh, last month out to California at Azusa Street, there was a gathering. And I'm going to show you a video clip. This was an opening of the gathering, and then we're, we'll, we'll go from there. But uh, uh, Rodney, if you want to go ahead and run that. Jesus' name. Up, oh, the other one. We're going to watch that one. Zakia! Shivari!
years had a dream that when the drums played, it would have opened up Psalms 24. We said nothing to anyone, but they begin to read right here. Psalms 24. We declare there is an opening. Lift your voices. We declare, lift up your heads. Oh, you gates at the King of Glory. Can come into Los Angeles. Into America. Go ahead and cue that other one up. We're going to watch that in just a minute. We didn't, I didn't show this one first service, but I just felt like with what's been transpiring as we were worshiping that this one is, is just apropos. Uh, and you're like, what, what? Maybe you're going, why did we need to just watch that? Well, because I thought you should. <laughs> now, on again. Why, why do we need to why do we need to watch that 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 video from the first time I watched it and I would encourage you it's, it's on YouTube you can watch the whole thing it's actually 20 minutes there's all kinds of stuff that goes on after that but what I felt was really significant is and, and it may just be me but when I when I watch First Nation people dance in regalia it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And it does something to me deep, deep inside. And I'm watching this and I'm thinking, here, here are these dancers on a platform. And they're, 
and these same feet have danced these dances before the Europeans, uh, Europeans ever came to this land. And we all know the history, and I'm not trying to whitewash anything, but what I, what I do know is right now, Jesus Christ is bringing a unity to this planet that's never been seen where First Nations people and European descendants and African descendants and Asian descendants, all of us can dance together in one place and dance one song. And uh, this, this next clip, I didn't show this first service, but I think just with what Casey uh, exhorted us through, and that was just really good, Casey, what she exhorted us through it when she said that this one just came to mind. It's not quite as long, but uh, let's watch this one. This is Todd White. Jesus' name. All right. Okay. Love you too. Bless you. Love you. Love you. Bless you. All right. I just want to join hands with you guys. Okay, here's, here's the deal. I believe that the Catholic Church and the Christian church and we're going to come together right now so Father I thank you in the name of Jesus God for a mighty baptism on the Catholic church God Jesus name Father I thank you in Jesus name Jesus' name, God, I thank you. In the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, stretch out your hands, guys, right now. Holy Spirit, more fire, Jesus' name, fire of heaven. In the name of Jesus, stand together for me. Come stand together. Stretch out your hands, guys. No, we're good. In the name of Jesus right now, I thank you for a massive baptism on the Catholic Church. I thank you for the fire of heaven in Jesus' name. God, I thank you in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus name. More. More Holy Spirit, do what you do. God, I thank you in the name of Jesus right now. More, increase, increase. Like a like a Jesus name. More, 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 more. Let's hold it. More fire. More. Jesus, I ask you for great increase right now. I honor these men. I thank you in the name of Jesus, God, that they represent you. I thank you that Azusa is going to be a mighty outpouring on the Catholic Church. In the name of Jesus, God. In the name of Jesus, God. In the name of Jesus, God, thank you. Thank you, God. Jesus' name. Can you see that microphone, please? I want you to do me a favor. Sure. I just want you to pray over everybody here. Sure. Lift up your hands, guys. Come on. Oh, Heavenly Father, as Lou Engel taught us, we need to fly united. So, Lord, the only way we can heal a divided nation, a divided world, is with a united church. 
So Heavenly Father, I ask you to continue to bless and send your spirit, the spirit of love and truth upon all of us here, Lord. Let us all be instruments, instruments of unity, solidarity, and mercy. So I ask you to bless and heal everyone here, Lord, in a mighty way. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now that was at Azusa. That was, yeah. Yeah. I, I've showed that in response to Casey's exhortation to us. Just be, and in saying this, there are voices that say we are divided, we're broken, we're not in unity, we're not capable, we don't have what it takes, our best days are behind us, and on and on and on it goes. And what I just declare over this house and over this is the body of Christ is not broken. She's beautiful and she's whole and she's emerging and she's powerful and she's anointed and she's loving and she's fulfilling and she's going to put her hand print on every place where darkness and brokenness and injustice dwells she is going to touch that and release healing and release healing and release healing because it's the will of the father that everybody know his goodness and his goodness just doesn't fall out of the sky happens when just normal people like us grab a hold of something that's inside of us and says I'm going to give this away I'm just going to give it away and sometimes those steps seem small and insignificant in the beginning but I'm telling you every small step ultimately becomes great victories don't ever be discouraged by the smallness of what you think you hold at the moment God is the God of increase. He's the God of multiplication. He's a God that will take the, the, the things that seem totally insignificant. And I think he just likes starting there. I think he looks for things that, are, that, that the odds are so stacked against it, it can never happen. And he's like, yeah, I think that's where I'll go. And we, we, we like to build edifices of great potential and ask him to bless it. But I think his heart is, no, I, I, where, where's stuff really broken? Where, 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 are, where's that? I'm, I'm just gonna go hang out there because I don't wanna bless it, I want to infiltrate it. I wanna make radical changes because that's the victory that we hold. This Jesus of Nazareth went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed by the devil. This thing called the church, it's incredible. And people, we are living and seeing with our own eyes, I think, the greatest transformation of society since Jesus came. I don't think there's ever been a time in history from the cross resurrected in the ascension from that point to the present. I mean, there's ever been a time in history that is what we're seeing right now. Just say. We haven't got it all right yet. But we're getting a lot of it right. 
thank goodness, it stays under the radar screen. Jesus, help us so that we don't make getting on the evening news our motivation for why we do what we do. You know, the, the Moravians did what they did for over 100, or right around 100 years, a little over 100 years. Continual prayer, continual outreach. They, they shaped Europe, this group of people that lived on a rich man's estate. The interesting thing is, is I, as I've read through the various articles on the Moravians, and, and there's like, they're just like one of my great examples in history of, of what people can do. You know, it was, it was actually John Wesley came to America the first time because he was going to, yeah, he wasn't even saved. He, he came to convert the Indians. But there was a couple Moravians on the boat and the boat got in a storm. And everybody on the boat was feared for their life, except these two insane Moravians who were down below worshiping God and singing praises. <coughs> and Wesley was so struck by that, he's like, what the heck? So he asked them, like, how could you do that? And they were like, oh, because we love Jesus and he loves us. And even if the ship sank, we're good. But we're, we were pretty sure we we're going to make it to shore. And it so rocked Wesley that, wait a minute, I'm going to lead people supposedly to know God, and it's a God I don't even know. So how can I give away what I don't even know? And I run into these couple people who their lifestyle is totally different. And it's what led to, to Wesley's salvation. And you know the rest of that story. The interesting thing is, in all the stuff I've read, uh, Count van Zinzendorf was the, the estate that they lived on. I have yet to find a name of a single Moravian. I mean, maybe in some of your research or reading, you found it. I'd be interested in that. But in all that I've read, nowhere. You know, normally you say, well, it was John Wesley. Well, it was this. Well, it was that. It was you can't find their names, but there was a ton of them, and they went around the world evangelizing the world, and we don't even know who they are. I want to be like that. To be able to live from the world's point of view, to live in total obscurity, and yet be transforming the world. To Jesus be the glory. It's for him. It's for him. It's not about building kingdoms and networks and da da da, da. And I'm not, I'm not throwing stones. I'm just saying there's a place in this thing where God is looking for the humble who don't care about credit and recognition and all that, but just go about doing good and healing all that are oppressed by the devil. I don't want to be like that. I'm not there yet. But that's where I want to get. I mentioned today's Pentecost Sunday. <laughs> and when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven the sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues of fire appeared on them and rested on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I was fascinated by this as I've been, you know, just 